Hi Stampers, this is Karen Phillip. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm pleased to show you how to make this card. And this technique is called the Fancy Fold Buckle Fold. And this buckles right in and opens like that. And to close it, you simply pull it back and go underneath your little dot. This is another sample that I made using all of the lavender paper, perennial lavender and in the purples. And this one I added an extra layer of designer paper and just put a little design on the bottom. This also has a different border, you may or may not, or buckle, may or may not notice. This one is using some different dies. This is, these are the Thoughtful Expression dies and I use these right here. Also, I use the Hummingbird because this is a bundle called Thoughtful Expressions. It has the cute Hummingbird, some sentiments, and some flowers. And those are also cut out with the dies. However, when I first made it, I didn't discover that until after I made this one, I used these dies, the Countryside in and so you can see this one is more angular and this one's a little fancier. Otherwise they're done the same way. Uh, yesterday when I was putting away everything, I was I put this one, set this down and set this one on top and realized that this one that we made in class is too big for an envelope because I didn't cut it down correctly. So the dimensions that will be on my website will be correct in what I'm going to tell you at this point. So I should probably just cut this right away so this will be right. So our piece of cardstock should be seven and a quarter, not seven and a half if you got the instructions, and scored at three on the left side. So you're going to score it at three inches right here. So this part will be just a little bit different than what it looks like <laughs> on the sample. Okay, so now we also need some designer paper and we need our buckle. So we'll show, I'll show you how to do the buckle part first. We have these two pieces and what you want to do is you can use your paper trimmer to trim this piece and if you're using the other buckle, you want to just trim from this point straight up. So where the design starts is where you want to trim it. So I'm trimming it, this is right in the, in the groove. Trimming that piece off with the darker, the darker gray is cut, the lighter one is um, score. So we just have this little piece that came off. And now on the blue, this is blueberry bushel, same thing, you will line it up to the groove Make sure you put the right blade up, and this is the scoring one, the light one, and just give it a little score, and just fold that down, and that's how you get the buckle. Now we will attach it to the card, so with the fold going underneath, you'll add some adhesive on to the top part of that fold. So here's the score line and you can see the shiny of the tape. Fold that down underneath and place it on the right side of the card even with the edge of the card. And you have to do this before, well you should do it before you add any designer paper. So now you can see maybe the edge, here's the edge of the I don't know why the lighting is so weird. Okay, so you can kind of see right here. That's where the edge is. So the back is plain. And then we'll fold that down, and that's how we get our buckle. But now we will decorate it with the designer paper. This is the Winter Meadow, I believe it is. Yes, Winter Meadow. It's an online exclusive. So we'll use our smaller piece first. And... 
put that right on the right side, leaving about an eighth of an inch all the way around on the three sides. So here and here. And then it hides your little piece that you have for your buckle. Next we will put a larger piece on. We didn't have one, so I'll have it in the kit. All right. So now we'll put the larger piece right on here. Make sure if you have a design of the designer paper that it is going in the correct direction. This one does have an up and down, basically. So that goes right on the front, like so. And then we will stamp the sentiment on this white piece. And you want to make sure that the flat side is toward the right. I'm just doing a thinking of you. And I'm kind of going on an angle. And then we will attach that to the... And you want to put the sentiment kind of on the left because your hummingbird will be going on the right. So you want to make room for your hummingbird. This goes here, like so. So you leave a border on both sides, or all the way around. Next we will do the inside. That's just a piece of two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Again, all the dimensions will be on the website. We're taking the little flower in that set. We'll just put it down here. And then you can color it with your blends. And I'm just using the green for the leaves, uh, granny apple green. Just kind of giving it a little color to match the outside of it. And then just coloring a couple of the, or all the flowers in, uh, what color is this? Pool party. Like so. Basically that's all you have to do, how quickly that goes. Now we will attach it to the inside of the card. Okay. And that gets closer to the, well, an eighth of an inch on the left side. Well, closer to the side because I messed up with the original. Oh, it still works. Okay. So we're like that, and when you open it up, it'll be probably, hopefully not crooked for you. So we have that point of it. And then I will attach the next, the little dot. And what this dot does is it holds it shut. And we're using the small dimensionals because it's a little small circle. You can use any size, shape, or whatever. Um, I'm just using a three-quarter inch circle. You can get it from dies or a punch if you have it. And you want to attach it to the left side of the circle. You don't want it in the middle. And the reason is, when you put this down, you'll close your card, place the little dot toward the left, and till it touches the actual uh, buckle part. And that way you'll have enough, enough room to lock it in there. And it ends up being like about halfway to the circle. For your little sample, and then I want to show you a trick with the hummingbird next. But for your sample, this is what it will look like. Same idea. And you just hold that under. Okay. So now for a hummingbird, I, I, I don't know if I figured it out or not, but I came up with a, a way to quickly color our bird. And it looks like, oh, you spent a lot of time shading and everything, and I really didn't. So I use my Stamparatus to, for classes because it's, I can cut them all out at once and then lay it into the Stamparatus, maybe. All right. It just works good for classes. Okay. Ink it up. Now, if, when, if you do have a Stamparatus, I know people are like pushing it and going crazy. It's better to re-ink it several times than to push really hard because it's really not necessary. And we got a nice image. All right. Next, we will color it. And the way I colored it, I'm going to put the cover back on the memento. 
is I'm using daubers and a blend. And I took the, I some paper to cover it up. Oh well. Wow. Um, I took the blueberry bushel and pool party and used some daubers and gently inked up. I started with blueberry, just gave it a little, little tap and really, really lightly, you can go darker if you want really dark, just on the outside of the bird, his wing, well, both his wings, like so, and a little bit on his head. And that's all that I did to shade that part of that color. Next, I took... Uh, okay, wait, I'm getting close, there we go. Next, I took the pool party, and I went just kind of over the one part that I already colored, I love, make sure you leave some white. So now you can see that it's, I just did this part with the pool party, it dries lighter, just so you know. Again, you want some white just to give it a little contrast. And then finally, I took the, this flirty flamingo, or you could use blush, not blush and bride, what's the other one, petal pink. And I just put a little bit on his belly. Again, leave him white. And so that's how, that's all I did to color it. And it looks like you spent a lot of time shading and coloring, and it's just a quick way to color <laughs> that I thought worked pretty neat. Now, when you put your bird on the card, you want to make sure, I pop this up, but you want to make sure <clears throat> you don't use any dimensionals on the wings sticking up because then this whole thing will stick. So you might want to lay it on there <clears throat> and do it the bottom of the bird and hold it down, line it up, and now when you open it, it opens just like that. And then I did add a little gem that is hiding, I think. It is hiding, but I added a gem. I took them all out. Oh well. <clears throat> right here, right in the center of the card, or right in the center of the circle, just for, again, just a little bit of a decoration so it didn't look like a, a circle just hanging out. So that's it for that card. I hope you enjoyed watching how to make it and, is, and coloring with the dauber so you kind of get two techniques in one. Thanks for watching and have a great day.